Uh, my name is Tetsuya Odajima from the DKEN uh, Center for Computational, Computational Science. I, I will talk about the, uh, this title. <coughs> now, first of all, I will introduce the overview of Flagship 2020 project. I am a member of the of architecture development team of Flagship 2020 project. So our project mission is building a Japanese national flagship supercomputer, the POST-K, and developing the, a wide range of HPC applications in, uh, in order to uh, solve uh, social and science issues in Japan. Uh, this figure shows the uh, um, POST-K uh, processor and the prototype board and more details of post-K processor are familiar with the present presentation of uh, in hot chip 13, so please refer to that more details. And this this processor is a many core processor architecture based on the ARM V8 plus SBE. And SIMD length is uh, 512 bit, and the number of core uh, is uh, 48 plus assistant cores. And the V uh, employs uh, uh, the second generation uh, of high, high bandwidth memory, uh, which is uh, unpackaged stacked memory. The, the network is a chip integrated, integrated uh, 60 mesh torus interconnect. And the, this figure shows the start and the update of our, of our uh, project. Now is a uh, design and power, powered on, and the schedule is uh, as a uh, schedule is. Uh, this start is, uh, update uh, this starts is a uh, schedule is as scheduled sorry <coughs> and uh, uh, we announced that the post gate early access pro uh, program to begin the around two two uh, two uh, two thousand twenty twenty two <coughs> okay so we have been the, uh, working on the uh, performance and uh, performance evaluation and tuning for the a processor of uh, post-K supercomputer by the simulator. The, at the same time, the, we, ha we are work also working on the research, uh, research of architect uh, processor architecture the, by the simulator. Because the simulator can be changed, its hardware, uh, various hardware parameter easier. So we use the alternative parameter, and not that of post-K parameter. So we employ the, these, these tools for our environment, uh, our evaluation. The Gen 5 is a, a general purpose processor simulator, and MCPAT is a, frame, a framework for the calculating the power consumption and processor area. This is our simulation environment. The, this figure shows the flow of uh, estimating the area and the power consumption. The first uh, application and or benchmarks execute on the Gen 5 SVE, and uh, then uh, the stati statistical informa information of Gen 5 SVE to input to the MC part with the uh, hardware configurations. So these hardware con configurations can be changed uh, easier. So we can uh, evaluate the various hardware configurations with uh, same same application binary. So the MC part calculating uh, calculates the uh, power consumption from the reference energy consumption of FPU and access frequency. Okay, I'm announced the wide SIMD architecture named a uh, scalable, scalable vector extension SBE for short. The SBE supports the from 128-bit to uh, 2048-bit to uh, bit vector lengths. <coughs> so ARM SBE realizes the vector length agnostic programming which is uh, independent of uh, vector length. So because uh, there is no vector length information in the SV code. So when issues the uh, SV instruction, that they refer to the uh, length system hard hardware register to in, uh, in each processor to decide the uh, vector length. So we can use the same binaries on different vector length environment. So we introduced the, uh, the purpose of our researches. So we have been uh, evaluating the effect of vector lengths on the, uh, sorry, in the performance of benchmarks. The vector length agnostic of SVE is uh, very useful for our environment uh, evaluation. 
uh, because the, it enables to execute the different vector lengths with same uh, application binary. Now, from this evaluation, the, in order to improve the uh, performance of wide simile, the enough out of all the resources, especially the vector register, uh, vector registers are needed. So, in our study, uh, we evaluate the effect on, of vector lengths in the performance and the energy consumption the, by using the simulator. So we focus on this, what is the trade-off between the performance and the hardware resources. This is more detailed of our research. That we have been comparing the performance and the energy consumption among 512-bit and 1024-bit vector lengths. The generally, the peak performance of 1024-bit FPU is twice that of 512-bit vector lengths. The however, the area of FPU and the register file uh, will be it uh, will, will be increasing simultaneously. And, uh, on the other hand, uh, there are the various implementation of FPU. So, for example, the four 1024-bit vector. Uh, one, one issue with 1024-bit FPU and two issue, issues with 512-bit uh, FPU. The peak performance of two issue case is half uh, that of one issue case, but the area of 512-bit FPU is almost uh, half that of 1024-bit case. So there is a trade-off between the performance and the hardware resources. So we evaluate the uh, advantage of uh, longer vector lengths with multi-cycle FPU uh, in this presentation. Okay. The Gen5 and the MC part are highly flexible too, but the default functions are limited. So we extended the, these tools. The Gen5 is we from, uh, got from uh, ARM has uh, only atomic mode. Atomic mode is a uh, cycle, uh, instruction level uh, simulator. So that we have been uh, implementing uh, O3 mode of Gen5 SV. O3 is a, a cycle level simulator, the more detailed simulator. <coughs> and we introduced a throughput control to keep the hardware resources uh, among different vector lengths. And for example, there are two different uh, vector lengths. Left hand side is a 512-bit uh, vector lengths with a 512-bit FPU. And the right hand side is a 1024 bit vector length with 520 uh, bit FPU issues every two cycles. So it means uh, adding the one cycle delay in this case. <coughs> so there, there is a different vector length, but the amount of FPU hardware, hardware and the peak throughput of FPU are the same. So it enables to execute the uh, different vector lengths on on the almost the same hardware, uh, uh, almo almost the same amount of hardware resources. Okay, the default MC part does not uh, correspond to the to uh, SIMD instruction uh, on the scalar instruction. So we defined it the statistical information of SV instruction to input the MC part, and we. Also introduced uh, the feature of calculating energy consumption of SIMD instruction. So we defined the calculation of energy consumption, uh, calculates, the, calculates the energy consumption uh, like this. Okay. So there is an architecture parameter of Gen5 we used. The, these parameters are based on the preset parameter in Gen5 SVE. So we defined the instruction latency for SVE I refer to the neon instruction. And these hardware parameters, the clock, the cache size, and process rule, and so on. Now these parameters are the out of order resource parameters. And we also defi newly defined the, uh, this physical vector register and set to uh, 96 for this parameter. So in Gen5, the SIMD widths of execution unit and uh, register file will be 
uh, changed by the uh, vector length uh, simu simultaneously. So we employ the throughput control to keep evaluate different vector lengths with almost the same uh, hardware resources. We evaluate the, these, uh, these three uh, configurations. Lane four is 512-bit vector length, and lane eight is 1024-bit uh, vector length. Um, each FPU executor, uh, so each FPU issues one vector by one cycle. So the peak performance of uh, lane eight is twice against that of lane four. <coughs> also, the uh, FPU area and FPU and hardware digital area is also, also twice. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Lane eight half is 1024-bit. Uh, Lane eight half is a 1024-bit uh, <coughs> vector length, but using the 524-bit. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, how about the FPU is 512-bit uh, vector length. So it takes the two cycle to execute a vector. So the peak peak FPU performance is half against that of Lane four. Uh, Lane sorry, Lane eight. And the register file are also the same uh, that of lane eight. So the, it means the amount of hardware resources or resources of lane eight half is just uh, twenty five percent larger than lane four. Okay. So this slide shows the uh, processor area from result of uh, MC part. The processor area uh, contains the L two cache, the FPUs, the floating point registers, and so on. The area of lane uh, L2 cache and others are all, almost the same in or, uh, among all, uh, all among uh, these uh, configurations. Okay, so <coughs> but the area of lane eight is uh, but the processor area of lane eight half is only ten uh, plus ten percent that of uh, lane lane four. The but the area of lane eight is uh, uh, thirty plus thirty. 8% larger than that of rainfall. So focusing on the FPUs and the floating point registers, the area of lane 8 is 95% larger than that of lane 4. So the area, uh, the area of increasing according to the number of element of, of a vector, so the impact of uh, many core processor is uh, so great. So we use the uh, Amcran uh, version 18 point to with all first, all first option and we evaluate the Z2 kernel. The end body is a uh, latency bound kernel and the stream triad is a memory over cache bound uh, kernel. And the problem size is uh, like, like this. And uh, the data are on L1 or L2 cache range. So in this evaluation, we do not consider the leak current. Next slide, uh, this slide shows the uh, evaluation of n body and the storing triad. The left hand side shows the uh, execution time, and the right hand side uh, shows the uh, energy consumption. <coughs> in n body case, the lane 8 is the uh, fast, fastest in fastest uh, uh, than uh, others because the uh, uh, FPU of <coughs> F, 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 F throughput of then A to FPU is the uh, fastest uh, than others. But the, however, the then eight half also the first 43% uh, faster than then four. Um, four. And the hardware resource of then eight half is almost the same in then four. So a longer vector length with multi-cycle FPU is better in latency bound kernel like N body. The, on the other hand, the stream triad, the ex execution time is uh, is, se or, uh, is se same in all configurations. So vector length does not affect in the performance in stream triad case. So uh, therefore, there is no much advantage in uh, to increase the vector length in memory band kernel. Okay. So you may be wondering the why the performance of lane 8 half has improved. 
So in n body evaluation, the maximum user utilization of FPU on REM4 is just 44%. So in this, in this kernel, the utilization of REM4 has room even if, so, uh, sorry, this is a REM8 half. So even if a REM8 half uses the twice cycle on FPU. So the utilization may be, uh, may be down lack, uh, due to lack of out of order resources. Uh, in the other case, so the utilization of, uh, sorry, this, this percentage will be uh, down. So if the utilization of FPU on REM4 is close to 100%, uh, for example, the tuned DGM. So in this case, the, the peak performance, uh, uh, performance improvement cannot be obtained because it is limited by the throughput of FPU. They, this, this FPU is a 520-bit, 12-bit. So the, for, the, for this reason, the, it is a better uh, to have a wide vector length FPU in compute band kernel. Okay. I will summarize the, uh, pre my presentation. The, by increasing the vector length, the per uh, <coughs> performance improvement and uh, low power consumption can be realized in uh, latency band kernel. Uh, <coughs> on the other hand, the vector length uh, does not affect in the performance of uh, memory band kernel. Mm. The energy consumption of REN8 half is almost the same as that of REN8. <coughs> so the from these results, a longer vector length uh, with multi-cycle vector unit, for example, REN8 half, is uh, well balanced between the performance and the hardware resources. Okay, finished. Let's thank our speaker. Uh, we have some time for questions now, so if anyone wants to go ahead and ask, ask a question. Oh, there. Timothy Hayes, Arm Research. Uh, very interesting talk. Could you talk about the sparsity of the, the codes that you looked at? Because if you're not utilizing the maximum vector length, um, then it can make more sense to have, for example, multiple uh, functional units taking in half a vector length, for example. Or are you always maximizing the, the maximum vector length in all of your codes? So, for example, in, in, your, um, in your setup, you have um, a 512-bit vector, right? Um, and then you compare it against a 1,024-bit vector. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'm asking, sometimes it could be better to replicate the number of functional units with a lower maximum vector length, as in to have two redundant 512-bit um, uh, uh, vector engines, assuming that you cannot take advantage of the maximum vector length of 1,024. Do your codes correspond to that kind of situation, or are they always saturating the, the vector, the register length? We can take it offline if, uh, if <laughs> you need to remember. Don't worry. Sorry. Any other question? I do have a question, actually. Uh, do you have, by any chance, any idea of how accurate your power models are compared to actual real hardware? Huh? Yeah. Do you know how accurate your power model are? You, you do some power predictions, right? with your uh, simulations. And I was wondering if you have access to... A power to Yeah, yeah. And do you know how accurate they are? How close to reality? Uh, yeah, this, 
this estimation this estimation is very rough <laughs> yeah. yeah because the and we calculate the peak uh, uh, the uh, energy consumption right the oh, I see. access to the fpu to the vector length set elements the energy on, on the this parameter so okay. the other uh, effect the many many uh, affect the energy consumption so we have to uh, consider that these uh, another uh, effect yeah. okay thank you so any more questions okay i think then we we are done uh, let's thank our speaker once more <laughs>